Hello, 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 and welcome to another broadcast of In the Circle. I'm your host, Rico Blatney, or better known as Rico Blatney. Uh, this is our YouTube ministry here, our YouTube ministry channel, where we always endeavor and put things up under the microscope and uh, make our eyes singular so as the whole body can be full of light. The light is the truth. And once you put things up under the microscope and see them for what they are, then you have to make a decision. You're going to rock with the truth or you're going to deny the truth. Are you going to accept it or are you going to reject it? Because you can't change it and you definitely can't deny it. But on today's broadcast, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and give a prelude saying that I am not an attorney and anything and everything we talk about here is spiritual. Also educational and entertainment purposes only because we're going to be stepping to the civics today. And if you're in need of a lawyer or legal advice, seek one of those, um, which I would advise you not to because they work for the courts. <laughs> they don't work for you. Nevertheless, in this civic, we're going to be talking about the public and we're going to also be talking about the private. Um, the public is something we, everyone is used to. Everyone already knows about the public. Uh, you have your public school system. You have your public transportation. You have your public uh, government. The government, whenever you hear public, you hear government. And once you hear government, you hear benefits. This is what you're going to get all the way through dealing with the public. <clears throat> it's going to be governed by the government. Most of them are, um, are not even actual law because, for well, for me, the Bible is my constitution this is my law book and the bible is how i handle and conduct myself privately and publicly hmm. but as we continue to endeavor off into understanding the public the public has its way of doing things the public uh you the public has, once, once you actually engage in the public, you give up a lot of your private God-given rights and trade them in for benefits. And that is not biblical. Uh, you see the scripture up there, and I will get into it later um, so we can show you some things and give you an understanding of public and private. But in the public, you're, you're trading in all of your God-given rights. The Constitution was written so as the government could be governed not the people but the government can be governed the government was put there to protect the private right and liberty the private god-given rights and liberties of the people so whenever you do that you enter into contracts the only way to be involved is through contracts, whether they're implied contracts, they're consensual contracts, or however they may be, you're in a contract with the government, and they're going to strip away your rights and, and offer you a great deal of benefit to make it seem like you're actually getting something, but the benefits are all can be stripped away from you at any time, just like the Social Security. You see, it was invented or created for a sole purpose of actually saving up for your retirement but now they take your money they invest it and they penalize you if you were to try to get it early you have to jump through hoops to get the money that you put in that they're taking and profiting hand over fist they promise to give it to you 20 to 30 years later which we'll get into another subject another time when we talk about maturity of bonds and things of that nature but even whenever you come out of the private and engage in the public then you do know that you've lost a lot uh, public schools indoctrinate you to be a good employee, not a entrepreneur or a business owner. Um, it's gonna they teach you to follow their their protocol. Um, also, with the public schools, I homeschool my kids. Um, but with the public schools, you're gonna get whatever the government has deemed to be good and fit for for the child and for itself. The child is not being raised for your benefit. It's being raised and indoctrinated for the benefit of the government. And then you have religion. Also, it's another indoctrination too for the public. Used to uh, control more of the masses. 
And so, also in the public, you're going to get a lot of statues and uh, ordinance masquerading as law. Uh, and a lot of the statutories, uh, statues and your, uh, your public laws and all of those things, um, you, you enter into a place where, um, and you know, well, your driver license is one. Once you get your driver license, you, you sign up for your driver license, you are cited, you get your license. Now that the government has given you permission because you do have the right to travel in your own way to and fro. But the Constitution supports that. But through statutes and ordinance and public uh, policies, uh, once you sign up for that license, you give up that real right to travel, in a sense. And you trade it in for ordinance where you can be locked up for years and years, or you can be locked up at times for a price if you violate laws where they're or, or they're going to hit you off with crimes and treat you as if you're a criminal that there's no one else involved in it. Now, you can be locked up with uh, victimless crimes, uh, speeding, um, things of that nature, which I don't condone any, a lot of un, anything that's unsafe. But, like I said, there are vic victimless crimes. There's no one injured there's no true injured party but yourself because you're gonna take the take the hit it's gonna hit your pockets and your life and lock you up and things of that nature so that's a lot that goes on in the public but in a private in your own domain you can be the master of your own domain where you have all your God-given rights. You have the freedom to do a lot of things. And then the Bill of Rights was placed for the government to protect these God-given rights. And a lot of times, once you're dealing and so endowed in contracts with the government or uh, in the public, then you, you, you walked away from the private rights. So, When you deal with the private, the private have the right to be left alone by government and everyone else. As long as you're not uh, causing any harm or risk to the public. So there's a lifestyle that you could live, which I do. In the private world, we control everything and we own nothing, just like the government. But we retain all our rights. Um, there's access protections that you do and the way that you handle yourself and operate. You build you build your own uh, your own straw man or your own entity to, to create in the world of commerce. So when you go into the public, you still keep your privacy. So they have ways also in the government where you can enter into that contract, but you make the terms and conditions. And they have to make the acceptance. Any contract you have, you're going to have offer, terms and conditions, and acceptance. Now, as you go through, as we go through living our life, there are certain things that are held to public policy and, 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 and out there in the public that eliminates us from those strenuous things. So, in the private, depending on what automobile or what, entity you use to to interact with the public then do things look better for me i am a child of god meaning that i am a god i am from heaven earth is not my home just like my eldest brother jesus said that the birds have nests foxes have holes but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head here in this physical world so as I go through the public, I handle myself as an ambassador of the kingdom of heaven, an ambassador of God, a son of God sent here with a purpose. And, a, and I handle myself in public with those things. You have to get your status corrected. 
Because a lot of times that's what's in the public. They have a presumption, a assumption and presumptions that everyone is a part of the United States. And we will get into that later. As a citizen, you are an employee of the United States. Your social security number belongs to them. It is not yours. The birth certificate that they made is a duplicate from the original and which gives them ownership over the name and the social security number that's attached to the name. So therefore, you are an employee and you are a part of the public. That is a part of the public because that is really not you. Those are things that are identifying something that was you. So to say that, to say this is that whenever they gave you your birth certificate, whenever the birth certificate was given, your weight, height, size, uh, and your description has all changed. So, so anyway... So as we move from the private and operate in the public, what you do is you handle yourself and you carry yourself as God. You carry yourself as a, uh, um, a church. You are the temple of God. You are the church. So you handle yourself and you deal with those entities in that manner. And from there, um, do things begin to get better? But if we want to talk more and deal more, can't do too much on YouTube. But what we do is have private membership. Um, you can catch up with our private membership by catching our emails um, and contact us through email through that way and we can get you all set up until I get the web page up where you can go straight to the website and go to the web page and book them yourself for small donations but anyway as we get into the scriptures here we're going to see uh, out of Matthew 17 um, I think we're going to start at 24 and go down to 27 and when they were come to Caporium, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take customs or tributes, of, of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers, Jesus said unto him, Then are their children free. Notwithstanding, lest, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, and cast an hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. So Jesus and Peter have a dialogue here that um, starts off with the Romans. They are the ones that are collecting the tribute taxes. Um, you know, so that word tribute, you can look at it in two or three different ways. Uh, when you go to looking at it, you have to understand where it's used in scripture, how it's used and what it's used for. So even with tribute, it's something that you would pay for, um, like just being in a foreign land and you're going to pay tribute is something like uh, I'm going to give the best analysis I can give like say I used to watch a bunch of old movies back in the day and then the mob would come in and offer you protection for a certain amount of money um, for your store and your business or whatever you were operating whenever they wanted to move in and take a piece of the action so they would come through every time and as long as you paid that tribute to them your store was safe Little did they, people know that the store wasn't safe because the ones that would do the harm are the ones making you pay, you know? So the tribute was paid for protection and to show honor and to to give things in that nature. But in here, we're talking about the taxes. Um, so Jesus tells Peter, because um, he didn't call him Peter, he called him Simon, he called him by his name before he was, picked by Jesus. I'm going to say before he was somewhat converted over, same as Abram and Abraham, um, uh, um, Isaac, not Isaac, but um, Israel, the one he calls Israel. Um, he had another name as well. So before the spiritual awakening or the eye-opening experience that they had and had their names changing, uh, Jesus called them by his old name. And was like, hey, yo, Peter, 
He stopped him from coming in the house. What thinkest thou? Simon. And um, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute, which are the same thing. They take customary or it's customary to do the things that they were doing. But at this time and period, the Romans had come in into the land of Israel and they were the one oppressing the people. And they also had people like Matthew. He was a tax collector for uh, or tribute collector for Rome. He would take the money from his people and then give it to Rome. And this is the same thing Jesus was talking about. So what led me to this is that the spirit was saying or what the scripture is saying here is that, okay, <clears throat> Peter, I want you to go out here and to the public, allow the public to see you do what you do for a, uh, 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 um, financial living outside of his ministry. His ministry was his lifestyle. That was his private sector. Jesus was a private person. Even when he was in public, he handled himself the same way, up under the same rules and up under the same ordinance in the mm -hmm. private as he did in the public. And this is what causes a lot of the, the grief. But <clears throat> nevertheless, he told him to go into public and you go do the job that they know that you do where you will be taxed by them for doing the job since they have control over the land. So you go first fish, you catch, there's going to be a piece of gold in his mouth and you pay him that tribute for me and for you. But other than that, no, I do not pay tribute. I do not pay taxes. I do not pay homage. I don't do any of those things because I am who I am. And the only homage I pray to or I give is God. The only honor and glory I give is to God. So, <clears throat> as Peter went and handled himself in the public and handled himself in the world of commercial and he done a commercial act, it was enough to pay for what needed to be paid for just to keep the people off their back. So, if you're out there handling yourself in the public and you don't have these protections or don't have these things already in play, then they can't come up and ask you about these things. You can't be uh, uh, audited for taxes if you haven't done anything that has, uh, 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 you have not acquired a taxable event. You have not went out there and signed a W-2 and did all these other things or whatever it may be to be put into the public for what they would already know. So their thing was, is that <clears throat> we're not a part of that system, so we shouldn't have to pay. But Peter wasn't understanding it. Now, there's another scripture I want to bring you to in Matthew, also Matthew 22. And let me see where I'm going to start at. Uh, we say 16. And they sent out unto him three disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither care thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of man. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus pre perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image? And subscription. They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him, and left him, and went their way. The same day came unto him the, the Sadducees which say that there is no resurrection to ask him. Okay, and it goes into something else. But Jesus says here also, the same thing, reiterating with what I was saying earlier about Peter going out in the public and catching the fish, and that fish had Caesar's face on it, and it had Caesar's subscriptions on it. And he said, now, go get it to them so they can have that. <clears throat> then he also says here that, you know, render unto Caesar what's his, but what is God's? And unto God, the things that are God's. So all the things that are God's are things that are ours. Then we don't participate in that. So if you were going to be out there in the public, handling yourself in the public, then render Caesar's what Caesar's. If you're going to bring yourself from the private into the public and you're not going to be 
as God is in the public, then there is where the controversy may lie in. That's just my opinion because I handle my affairs biblically and religiously. Not in the sense of traditional religion, but this is my regular way of thinking, my regular way of life, and this is my regular way of, of doing things. So, as, you, as we go forward with this whole principle of living in the private and living in the public, then there are great benefits that come into the public. I mean, it comes into the private with a generational wealth and the things of God that can be passed down to the third, fourth, and fifth generation can be handled that way. Because what you're going to do is give God his, and, and, and we're not talking about the 10%. But hey, here, here's, here's another note while we're here. You can take that same 10%. What you should be doing with that 10% is putting it up in something that can make it multiply. Same way with the talents. Take that 10% and put it somewhere where it can multiply. And if not, take it to the bank where you can at least get a little usury for your money being there. You ain't going to get much. You might get 0 0.01 or 0 0.03 or 0 0.04 of a cent on, on the interest that you get to collect on it just by it being in the savings or whatever. But it will be there every time you need it. You give it to the organization. What if we have been taught through the public of the churches and religions and these organizations, it's going to be hard for you to come back when you need those things. You go back for your light bill if something happens or you need a car payment made or your insurance. Something comes up and the money doesn't add up right for you. And you go back to the church. They're going to tell you to continue tithing and God will work it out. Don't worry. Just pray and God will work it out. Well, God says that is the way the public is supposed to teach you. But what I teach you in private, the father of secret, don't teach you that. You're going to take that 10% of your earnings and you're going to put it back for a rainy day or for another adventure or another um, investment where it can, it can multiply. <clears throat> but anyway, the main reason I want to get on here and share this economic and some of the civic stuff with you is that you go back and do the research for yourself. And, and, but when you do understand that the, whenever you hear public, you hear government, you hear benefits. When you hear private, you hear God given rights and protected God given rights. But if you don't know your rights, you don't have any rights because you don't have rights unless you can enforce your rights and stand upon your rights. <clears throat> the same thing Jesus was doing here. And they knew that. That's why they came at Simon and didn't come at Jesus. Because <laughs> they couldn't. They know that he owned nothing. He, he controlled everything. It's, it's a beautiful concept. America does the same thing. They're a holding company. They, they, they own nothing, but they control everything. They allow all of their employees, all of their Social Security card holders, they allow them to keep the physical possession and to pay the taxes on that physical possession. And to pay for the upkeep on that physical possession. But don't pay those taxes. And it becomes their property to do what they want to. <clears throat> so, if you don't understand that whenever you do it, it's already their property. Because you're registering it with the state. You're registering it with the uh, the bank or whatever they get it. They're going to register the, the property, the deed records, with the state. Your car. You go to DMV. It's registered with the state. <laughs> You know, so if you handle yourself as a church, everything will be registered as the church and it'll be left alone. It won't be registered up under the state's control. Hope that makes sense. So you handle yourself right in the private and there's certain things that can't happen to you in the public. Not saying that people won't disrespect you or the system or those that's involved in the system because they are working up under the concept of they're absolutely right. They have been indoctrinated and they don't want to no other thought process this is what they know and this is what they believe and so in their eyes they are doing right so us who are enlightened we handle ourselves a certain way and we understand that we can forgive them father for they know not what they do they know not who they are up against or who they're warring against because they're not warring against us they're warring against the father they're warring against the god in us who is victorious by the way so <clears throat> Like I said before, there's certain ways you set yourself up in the private. You have trusts, you have LLCs, you have unincorporated uh, associations, you have non-profit associations, you have all these other things and, and setting them up right properly and handling yourself and 
carrying on your affairs for you and your family that way helps bring about or helps sustain and keep the generational wealth because the prosperity is your birthright this 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 is just what it is you know we we were born into abundance we come from abundance you know, so everything here for us and our abundance and the welfare of us is already here. As long as you don't rely on benefits and privileges <laughs> instead of rights. Um, everything, Jesus said, you got to bear your own cross. You got to build your own empire. It's, it's no one else to do it for you. There's no one else to set it for you. You do it. And if those that are blessed to have people in their life that came before them that was able to be righteous and leave behind their kids and inheritance and they're stepping into it then they have to keep this mindset in order to continue it and let it flow <clears throat> so these are just two of the scriptures that i use today um for me and my understanding my overstanding of it hoping to help open a couple people's eyes to understand things and to look at some things because what we have to do is go back and and actually look at things and accept the truth when we see them and we got to quit making up excuses, making up flat out lies. That's what they are. And, and anything but accepting the truth. We want to give something or somebody a reason why they did what they did. No, they did what they did, period. And the rest of that is, 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 is different. So when we see things for what they are, we have to accept them for what they are, no matter what it is. So when we deal with the spirit, the spirit can be in anyone or anything that we're involved in. So you got to recognize the spirit and understand it. And then you can accept the truth for the things that are going, going on. But if you're, if you're not going to accept the truth, then you're going to be asking and continuously seeing the same thing. And it's going to get frustrating. The truth is never going to stop revealing itself. Once you ask, even if you accept it or not, so it get tormented. <laughs> but <clears throat> nevertheless, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today, allowing us to put this up under the microscope. Um, remember what I said about it. Um, I want to shake up the entrepreneurial spirit in a, in you. I want to shake up the God in you. I want to shake up the line of Judah in you. And, and allow you to be like David. You you want to pray and ask God for his law, to his statutes and his ways. So as you can just be there, not so as you can have something over someone else or just so you can be a good servant. So as you can be the perfected gift to the world that you are, you can be the perfected gift that you are to your family and your friend. So you can be that perfected gift that he wants to show the world. We are all fingerprints of God. We are all ident uh, uh, all individually in our own way, unique. And God can be shown only through you and your uniqueness in the way he's designed to show himself through you. Same way with me and everyone else. Everyone has their own unique way. So, yes, if you want to know God and to see God most of the time for people to know or see the God that, that we serve in our side of our own heads is through us. So we are the face of God unto the world. That's why we are ambassadors. And this is things that we have to deal with. So search for those truths and allow them allow the truths to set you free. Oh, also Christ also said that whoever the son set free, he set free indeed. And a lot of things that we have, we've deeded our life away. Even in and 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 when you get the deed for your house, when you get your birth certificate, when you start signing your name on contracts, you're deeding yourself away. Uh, the Bible also says that God will He will renew all things, even the things that the canker worms and and the rust and all the other things ate away. He's gonna restore those things. He's gonna give those those things plus more back. So when you when you recognize what and who you are and you go after those things and then it's, it's going to be given unto you. I mean, that concept of Christ consciousness, what we teach about here, that you and God are the same. And once you can understand that you are God, then the energy that you believe in is going to start drawing and attracting everything that you need 
it's going to start pulling it to you. The energies are alike and they're going to be attracted to each other. So your, your mind thought is going to pull those things the same way your belief has worked for you in any other type of way. Whenever you step out of the box and step into the Christ consciousness or this God consciousness and this concept of I am the unique part of God that can't nobody else be. So there's no need of me trying to be anyone else or anything else but me. Then I can be sustained in myself and I can see you for who you are and and I can get a piece of God that I don't have of myself and you can get a piece of God that you don't have of yourself and so in this whole body we become whole so every every part of the body plays a part to the whole body so go out and be God be great um check in the descriptions and check in the comments for the email where you can contact and we can um, talk more about how to separate yourself from the public and, and live a private life and get your status corrected and and be able to move forward in life free from the carnage of the public.